have you been in the program? I have been in the program for seven years. Seven years? Mm -hmm. Okay. So seven years uh, you've been training dogs. That's that's a lot of dog training experience. How many dogs have you put through? Oh, Can you my, tell? Um, over 20. 20? Over 20 dogs, yeah. Wow. I've lost count. You were here 19 years from the time you're 16 years old. You have no outside experience. You have never been an adult in the free world, really. So how does that, how does that make you feel? A little emotional. Okay. Um, I mean, it's sad, but not only for me, it's sad for, probably it's sad for everyone involved. Involved in your incident? Yeah. It's like a group of teenagers and um, started off as wanting to beat someone up mm -hmm. and it got out of hand. So I probably would, if I could get a message out to just the parents to just, it's your business to kind of know what your teenagers are doing and what's going on so things don't happen like that. And How did you learn that in here? Well, um, I guess just growth and wanting to better myself and wanting to make a difference. I went through a lot of counseling. Um, I got my college degrees since I've been here. Um, I can let me do this. And because I was so young and I didn't have kids myself, it taught me patience. It taught me um, responsibility. That's like a huge factor for me. Mm -hmm. It taught me to care about a living thing, mm -hmm. um, to be able to give back to society and the community. That's a mm -hmm. big thing. Mm -hmm. So I have to learn to forgive myself. I know what happened. Yeah. And for me, reading your story uh, and then finding out you were in the program mm -hmm. was very hard for me because of the way that girl died. And I needed to talk to you, I'm talking to everybody, but I needed to talk to you especially because um, I was a burn victim. Yes, yes. You can see my head. And uh, getting burned is not a fun thing. No. And I, and I know what happened there. Yes, yeah. And I had to ask myself, you know, people ask on the outside, why are you donating dogs? Yeah to a prison. I understand. I see both sides very clearly. So I talk I to me a that. little bit about when remorse sets in, when you're an adult, is it when you're like, again, you're 16. When do you start yeah. feeling the, the pain of what you did? I had to go through things and experience loss myself. Like I lost my father at 18. So mm -hmm. that kind of, whoa, hit, hit me. Um, since I've been incarcerated, my mom almost died. She was sick from cigarette smoking, lung disease. Um, that hit me and then um, my sister my oldest sister had a head injury mm -hmm. frontal lobe so all these things hit me not that it would ever compare I could never ever imagine having my own child and something happening um, what happened is not okay it's not and I will always always be sorry for that it will always be with me do you live with that Always, I will always live with that. Every day? Every day, I wake up to that, yes. And I should. What do you mean and when I you should. say you wake up to it? Um, I'll never forget. It's always there. The, I always the, the scene is in your face? Always, that I participated and am responsible for taking part in ending someone's life. Yeah. It's always going to be a part of, it's always going to be there. So you have always. flashbacks? Um, I'll say, I don't let myself forget. Does that make sense? You want to remember. Do you do me. this in part for the memory of your victim? It's the only way I can give back because I can never, ever, ever, ever Wait. bring her back. Bring her back. Have you ever? I can never make it okay. It will never, no matter what I say or do, make that okay. And she gave me this. And one of the things I would like to do is is donate a dog every year in the memory of that girl. Yes. <laughs> would you be interested in doing that and training that dog? Yes, I would love that. Okay. Thank you. Well, I'll make sure maybe I can get you one of my dogs every year. Yeah. And then, uh, you know, um, I'm a Christian. I believe in prayer. I believe in the forgiveness of sins. I needed to see that you were remorseful. <laughs> I needed to see that you were remorseful. I needed to say, I can't believe what they did to this kid. I can't believe what they did. I can't either. <laughs> so you've dealt with it. I'm, I'm happy that I got the chance to I talk to you. I still deal with it every day. I know you do. I know you do. I know you do. And I should. 
I, all right. I you, think so. Yeah, but you can't beat yourself up. There, there is a God. You believe in him. And I'm sorry that happened to you. Well, yeah, don't worry about me. <laughs> um, I'm happy with the fact that I got to talk to you, who you are. Thank you. And I think it would be great if we could have a, in her memory, a, a, because she was an Indiana resident at the time, if we could, that might help you heal even more. I would love that. Okay, good. I would love that. Well, let's, let's work on it, okay? Give me a hug. Okay. Give me a hug. God bless you, sweetheart. Thank you, sir. My name's Charlie. Charlie. I'm not sir, okay? okay. Thank you. You're welcome, sweetie. <laughs> Thank you, when I approached her, I was, to say the least, uh, afraid, uncertain, not sure of how to ask the questions I wanted to ask. But what I came away with was a feeling that this person was a different person than she probably was when she committed the act. When I thought about what I said, I immediately thought, there's, there's no way you're gonna, this is going to work. You just kind of set up a false hope. You idiot. I mean, that's kind of how I felt. There was no way I was going to do that if I didn't get the affirmation of the victim's mother, whom I did not know. She did not know me. I'd never spoken to her. I took it upon myself to say, I have to at least give this a chance and call Mrs. Vaught and introduce who I am and tell her what I want to do and the more I thought about it I, I, I pretty much said this there's no way this is going to work I like Charlie um, it was okay it wasn't bad it was positive I felt good and I felt like um, he got some it was almost like a counseling session like a healing session I think it's wonderful Right off the bat, I thought it was awesome. But the first thing I thought, I was like, way, that's great, you know? Um, but I was concerned on Shanda's mother. What would she think? How would she feel? I don't want to do anything that would cause more pain to her. Um, if she's okay with it, then I would say yes. If she wants that, I would say yes. It's whatever she would want me to do, whatever she would want, whatever that if I can make um, her feel a little bit better in any any way I would do that I would do anything about power um, we're leaving tomorrow I wanted to we went to see Mrs. Law today one of the things I said to you first was I'd like to do this but there was no way I could do it without her um, permission it just wasn't something that and so um, I just want you to see before we leave what happened and because I think you deserve to at least see what happened. Okay. okay. I just needed to know that she knew what she did. I didn't know that she would ever know. I didn't know that Melinda was capable because I truly thought she had been so abused that there would never be a mental state that she could get to where she would understand what she did. But I do see that. And I can also tell you that after seeing that, I think I want her to train my dog, James. <laughs> It's better than hearing that I got out of prison. <laughs> we thought you might sleep a little better tonight. We want to know you more tonight. Thank you. That's awesome. Thank you. I just can't believe this is happening. I'm just shocked. I just feel like I won the lottery. I feel relieved. I'm shocked. <laughs> Yeah. I'm just glad she wants that. I just really didn't think she would say yes. She didn't just say yes. Like. She didn't. It wasn't like, okay, Melinda. I know this sounds crazy and weird, but I would just want to hug her. Just, not, I mean, just. not crazy and weird. Because she's a mom just like my mom. <laughs> but happier for her because 
I just always wanted to shame his mom to feel a little better. <laughs> I just want her to be able to be, to laugh and smile again, you know, and to be sincerely feel happy again. Even after all that pain, I think this is a start, and that makes me feel good. This makes me want to do even better. Absolutely. I've been, like, held back because, because of, I couldn't really forgive myself for hell partially but not because I felt held down and now I feel like I can just all the groups I've ever taken did not do this I've been to all the healing damaged emotions groups in here and all my, my psychology degree and everything and nothing did this for me it had to come from the mother it had to come from the source that I hurt it had, it had to a good day for everyone. It's a good feeling. And hopefully it will be like a domino effect. And I can't wait to tell everyone. I can't wait to scream to tell everyone this happened. Thank you. There was no way I can ever, um, Thank you for training all. <laughs> of course, that's what of course. Heal is all about. It's about bringing healing to a new level. Cast it behind you. It's yeah. Up. It's done. Okay? Now just make Mrs. Watt proud in the dog you turn out. Don't let me bring home a dog that goes poop on the rug the first time. You know? <laughs> no potty accidents. <laughs> <laughs> I know. I know that every one of those children that killed my child had somewhat of a, a horrible childhood. Jackie Vaught's daughter Shanda was kidnapped and murdered in 1992 by four teenage girls. Court testimony showed some of the girls had been abused by their parents. Vaught thinks abuse and neglect factor into many cases. Most of them had had some form of, of abuse and I, I know that that's the reason why these children could kill. It's not an excuse at all but it is a reason. I ask myself why and I don't have the answer. Melinda Loveless was one of Shanda's teenage killers. She and the three other girls held Shanda in the trunk of a car, stabbed and bludgeoned her, then burned her alive. Even she doesn't fully understand her crime, but she knows she was hurting from a childhood filled with abuse. It turns into anger if you keep that hurt and don't let it go or don't forgive that person or don't forgive yourself. That hurt can turn into anger and hate and um, make you do things that you would never really do. Melinda's hurt resulted from years of physical and emotional abuse by her father. She admits he sexually abused her as well from a very young age, but she still can't quite cope with it. Evidently, I'm, I'm not all the way healed. Um, I deny it too, in a way. I mean, I'm not calling no one a liar, but it's just, it's hard for me to accept or think that a dad would do that. Jackie Vaught now works here at the Floyd County Prosecutor's Office, but she says it's more than a job. It's a way to honor her daughter's memory by sending a message to other parents. In her role as chief investigator, she follows other crimes and sees lots of abused children and neglectful parents. That's what I tell the parents. If you, if you raise a child and you don't teach them love and compassion and caring and forgiveness, what else do they have but hatred? And eventually that hatred has to come out. And unfortunately, that evening, there were four girls there that had a lot of hatred inside of them, and it just all exploded. Vaught says when it comes to juvenile violence, she looks at the criminal first. But then, she says, she looks to the parents. I have to look at what was going on in their home for them not to come away with the message that this is wrong and you don't do it.